watch your fingers, Gus. Mm -hmm. And then the other reason I'm happy is because we're making a real stomach warming, uh, slow cooked braised dish. And nothing puts me in the mood for like hearty, slow cooked braised, falling apart recipes than a nice rainy Can day. I think you should cut it open. I don't know. Because you've got a knife right here. Okay, clean, you look at your mise en place. Do you have it's to go pee? Mess. He has to go pee pee, honey. You gonna do a pee pee? Yeah. Let's go do pee pee. All right. So Hannah's gonna talk to Gus about food while we do a pee pee. All right, hurry back. We're gonna wash our hands, right? What are you making, Gus? Um, I don't know. Do you know what we're cooking tonight here? Meat. We are doing the beginning stages of beef cheek bourguignon, which is a really popular dish at one of your dad's restaurants. And hi everybody. Oh, a tie-dye tutorial? Hmm. I don't know if I'm very good at it, but I did tie-dye our dish towels. We, all, we, are, we also get a lot of things messy when we do it. I get really messy, I do it in the grass. I've been tie-dyeing since I had kids. Yeah, our, glass, our grass is still stained out there from it. Red. Yeah. Stained red. Colleen's watching. Sharon. Who's Sharon? PDX Soul. All these people, I recognize all these people's names from watching all the time. Feels Yay. like they're our internet family. All right, he's back. All right, so, like I said, it's raining out. Um, if you've been following along, you know that we're making beef cheek bourguignon. It is one of the most iconic dishes that we serve at Le Pigeon. It's one of the few things that just never changes, but it does change. Uh, what I'm going to teach you how to do is braise the beef cheeks in the Pinot Noir wine slowly. It's going to be a two-part recipe, so we're not actually going to be eating this for dinner until Friday. But um, I'm going to teach you the nuts and bolts of how to get this dish going at the restaurant. Uh, if you want to take... What's that? Can I try something? Nope, it takes forever. We're going to cook it overnight, too. But if you do want to see what we're having for dinner, come on over here. Oh. This is one of my absolute favorite things. I was at the store because we had to find fennel what and tomato tonight? paste. What are we eating tonight? And this is a real cheap cut of pork that you can get at the grocery store. And they're called picnic ribs. <gasps> ribs? We're having ribs? Kind of. It's a cut, it's off of the shoulder. And the picnic rib is essentially a nice marbled fatty piece cut into strips off of the shoulder. It's up near the neck. And there was no juice put in this pan when I got these from the store. They're usually pretty cheap. This is about $15 worth of pork. No juice. So it essentially confits itself. And it's been in the oven for about three and a half hours at 350. It and smells incredible. I just put, you know, whatever seasoning mix, like kind of like a McCormick and Smith's type seasoning mix we have around. So this was a smoke McCormick and Smith's. I think that's a restaurant. McCormick's. McCormick's. Yeah. Um, this is a smokehouse maple. So what I'm gonna do here, it's super tender, it's been cooking, cause we gotta have- it, it, Can I eat this? No. It's a raw it. potato, yeah. sure. So now I'm just gonna put it in the oven while we do this demo. Take the top off, put it in the oven. We got rice cooking, we got some salsa go going. But uh, if anyone has any questions about that, Feel free to email cooking with the Ruckers. That's at Gmail. Cook in. Not cooking. Cooking. No G. Cooking. Um, anyways, let's get down to talking about beef cheeks. So this is a two-part recipe, like I said. The first part we're gonna sear the meat, season it up. If you don't have the beef cheeks and you follow it along, then short ribs work just absolutely wonderful. They're gonna be so delicious. Any, I'm gonna go around the other side because I don't any like any sort of high fat. Tough cut you want to braise. So these are the beef cheeks, and this is about three pounds. What I did was I uh, gave out a bunch of three pound portions to some folks that pre-ordered this week, and uh, they got they got really big ones. I took kind of smaller ones, but you can see this cheek here, and it is the actual cheek. This is called a medallion. Okay, there's another product out there that's beef cheeks, and it's kind of all the scrappy pieces that are around the face. This is the actual cheek and it's a medallion. What it has in it that makes it real wonderful is it has a line of collagen running through the middle of it, which 
When it's cold, cooked and cold is one of the toughest things ever. And when it's hot and soft, it's moist, it's fatty, and it just melts in your mouth. So that's what makes the cheek special. If you're at home and you have beef cheek medallions like this, maybe yours are a little bit bigger. Maybe you only have three pieces to make up that uh, three pounds. So just simply cut it in half like this. And you can feel it's gonna be just a little bit tough. Here's that line of collagen I was talking about. And you're gonna notice when we do uh, get in deeper into this recipe on Friday, you're gonna be able to see what I'm talking about. But th this this is what makes us. Yeah, I know. I I know. I was farming. I did my best. Okay. I just spent a bunch of time cleaning them up. Oh, I need a bit. If you can't get cheeks or short rib, are there any other substitutions for this dish? Yeah, chuck. Chuck. Yeah, beef chuck. I've actually pieces. and Lena has asked if we can make it in the Insta Pot and. I've made a ripoff of this dish in my crock pot before Instapot was invented with chuck and like red wine and some similar stuff. Sure. And so it's possible. It's just this is, you know, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're essentially just making a French pot roast here. So these ingredients done in an Instapot, you'll be, you'll be good. I'm going to eat this. It's a potatoes. Yeah. It's not good. It might give you an upset tummy, but that's okay. You always say you have upset tummies in this. Is it not good? Uh, I would give it a shot. Just eat it. Okay, so yeah. I have just slightly over three pounds here, but that's okay. A little under, a little over. Recipes are meant to be just kind of loosely followed. So I'm going to season these with salt and pepper. Uh, one thing you can do if you have the time is you can season it a day ahead of time. I didn't put that in the recipe because I don't want to turn this into like a three-day recipe for y'all. How long does it take at the restaurant to make it? It's I never at the it. at the restaurant we're making this. We're ne we never stop. There's always one part of the process of this in action. Um, so we get the beef cheeks in, and we get thirty pounds at a time. That's three cases, and they come in frozen and we defrost them and then the next day somebody does this process to them for a day where they season them and then they cut all the vegetables like we're going to do and that's called uh, making a beef cheek kit and then the next day after we make the beef cheek kit somebody comes in in the morning and they do what's called setting the beef cheeks because we're setting a braise and they sear them off like we're going to do and they get it to the point where we're going to get it today and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in the oven overnight at 200 degrees. About, let's see, what time do we usually go to bed? About 8.30, honey, 8.45, <laughs> no. Probably about 9, 9.30. Yeah. We're gonna put these in the oven. I'm gonna check them about, probably about 5.30 or 6 tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm gonna give them a poke yeah. if they want a little bit longer. That's great. Um, but overnight is great. If you can't cook them overnight, then just cook them low for about four or five hours at a higher temperature, about 325. So we're seasoned up on these cheeks here. Can we cook them for just a couple hours? Now we're going to get our vegetables ready. I've got some nice thyme here. Uh, I'm going to do a challenge with that and we just have to Thyme is pretty much an ingredient in every French braise you're going to come across. I actually. Can you need a bowl for me? Didn't have a uh, head of garlic, so we've got some frozen garlic cloves. That one. And you need one. Do you sous vide the beef cheeks at the restaurant? Definitely not. No. I kind of try to avoid cooking sous vide as much as possible because uh, I love touching and feeling the, the product. There's times when it's beneficial when we're running a tri tip. A Wagyu tri-tip dish that we were sous vide for 24 hours uh, right before we closed and that's so we could treat the tri-tip more like a steak than a roast and have it be absolutely butter soft but still the, like look medium when you got it but uh, so I'm gonna peel I have two carrots I think two socks of celery but these are a little bit small so maybe two and a half I'll go ahead and peel these carrots. We don't need the vegetables to be minced up too small because that they would break down in the cooking process. 
and they're gonna make a muddy sauce. So you want the flavor, but you want to be able to fish them out without having a lot of vegetable. I need to do that thing. Okay. Can I cook them? Can I do that? Yeah, will you take these carrots and cut them in half? That's a sharp, sharp knife, okay? Aww. It's okay, you can use it, just be careful. Like yeah, be careful, good. You just gotta respect it. Good, do this one. Then how can I do that? Do, put this one, and then when you hold the knife, remember? Hold on, can you have your hand? Can I do that? You're gonna hold it, you're just not gonna touch you. Can I do that? Oh. oh. There you go. And now be able, you can go through harder. There you go. Do you want to do that to the celery too? Hold it just like that. And then I do that. One second, Freddie. Okay. okay, good job. Great. What, can I put this? Yeah. You want to respect it, but not be scared of it. There you go. Do it one more time and you can do it a little bit harder and kind of, the knife is, it rocks. See how it's bent so it rocks? So you can kind of, there you go. Okay. Good job. Now, can you just see this end? Since you're doing so good, you want to just cut, cut those little ends and practice. See how like, you, you're using this and your fingers are up? Fingers are up in the air. Great. Let's do this one too. You're doing great. You're on a roll. Fingers up. Awesome. Great, so Gus just cut those vegetables up with the exact knife that I would use at work, so not with this one, but you have celery right here. You Are you, um, Lindsay wants to know if we're putting the garlic in with its like shell on, or is yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then. Oh, Sharon made the olive oil cake tonight. Oh, that's so exciting. Radical. We love hearing your success stories. I need that. This one? Good. Some of those onions were like on the on the edge. Yeah, they were a little rotten. How do people when... keep onions back in the day? You know, like and they kept in them the in cellar. a cellar. In the cellar. So oh, we need to keep them like on our porch. Oh. Well, it's pretty sharp. Yeah. I mean, I got one of those from the Montessori place. This. Yeah, those peelers. Yeah. Freddie, just use your words, honey. Okay, so I'm going to quarter the onion. Can I do it? Do you want to do a cut on the onion? Yeah. Okay, remember, how do you hold it? Nope, up, up a little bit higher. There you go. Yeah, good. Yeah, Just the like garage that. is a good idea. Okay. Yep. So you see how the knife, you guys see how a knife is bent like this? And that's so that you, it, this is for you too. What that does, why a knife is bent like that, is so you can have a rocking motion. And so you can put the tip of the knife down like this and cut through things. Can I try cutting? Well, we don't really want to, we, we'll cut some more in a bit, but not with that knife. Okay, so I've got my vegetables here. Hey. Sorry, babe. It's all right. My potatoes. Hey, you have a cutting board. You want some more stuff to cut? No. With your foot knife? I want to help you. I'll just let you help me in a second. Uh, I've got uh, tomato paste. This is just a standard cheapy tomato paste from Safeway. And I don't, I don't have I've got one bottle of Pinot Noir. Uh, feel free to use a nice Pinot Noir if you want, or you don't need to when you're cooking with it. Really. And I need more stuff. You have plenty of stuff to cut. You haven't even cut your celery. And then, this is the really important thing I wanted to show you. This is four cups or one quart of veal stock or beef stock. And there's a famous chef, a Scoffier, uh, who said a cook is only as good as his stock. And it's true, this is what really is the backbone of the dish. If you don't have a really high end veal or beef stock, the dish is still gonna come out great. But the better the stock is, the better the dish is. Uh, we can talk about stocks another time, learn how to make chicken stock, beef stock, veal stock, but it's great to find a purveyor. This is actually made uh, from Thomas Keller. You can go online, I'm pretty sure. I got this as a sample that they were uh, TKMM Stock Company. Oh, Portland, Oregon. But this is Thomas Keller brand. Each one of these is two cups, so you would need two pouches of this to make the recipe. Find a place that you can buy gated stock or make it and freeze it. Your life will be better. So here's our ingredients. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on. Do you want the light on for this, honey? Sure. We're going to turn on our pan. We're going to add some of that blend oil or vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever you use for searing and cooking. I think that's Quincy following the Wolverine looking. No. No? That's Jordan. Oh. Oh, God. From the onion? Yeah. It's weird. It's not like crying or what, having an eye water. It's just... Onion, onion tears. Um, so then, because I'm a restaurant guy, I'm going to use this, which is called a half hotel pan, to cook our beef cheeks in. But, if you have something like this, it would work. Something that's gonna hold it kind of uh, in the liquid, but not like the, where they're stacked on top of each other. Any of these vessels would do that. That's gonna go on the counter. So we're gonna get our oil nice and hot. And one of the steps to making a nice braise is to sear the meat ahead of time. That, causes the Maillard reaction, which is that flavor you get from a seared steak, a hamburger, like a smash burger. When the proteins caramelize in the oil, it creates that wonderful toasty flavor. We want to do that, even though the end result is going to be soft, fall apart, uh, delicious. We want to get that nice flavor, that sear in our, in our pan, because then that flavors the liquid. What we're doing is we're just building an absolute amazingly stacked, flavorful stew. And at the restaurant, the same beef cheek braising liquid that we've been cooking with since about 2007 has just kept going. We boil it and we reuse it and boil it and boil it. So it's been it's kind of like a sourdough mother. I know a lot of you guys are cooking sourdough uh, for a starter. Okay, so. And Freddie's cooking with his eyes closed. <laughs> Good idea. So some people were asking what you would use the strained fat for, and uh, Lindsay suggested using it for crispy Spanish potatoes. Uh -huh. Someone else suggested searing the cheeks in their own fat. Yeah. The what's the strained fat from what? From the stock. Oh, from a stock. Yeah. Yeah. What are you making, Freddie? What's the name of your dish? Looks better than all the other stuff you've made so far. No, don't rub a knife on your face. That's not good knife skills. So we're browning, we're browning these beef cheeks off in this pan. We're gonna do it in about two batches. And let's go ahead, we're gonna pickle fennel for the top of this dish. The end result, as you can see, is we're gonna serve these beef cheeks on a creamy brie cheese risotto beef cheeks, we've got rich on top of rich, and we need something to cut that because when you're creating a dish, you want to be able to have the palate be balanced when you take a bite. Sweet, salty, acid. So we've got brie cheese risotto, which is going to give that really stinky, rich, creamy rice flavor. Then you've got the beef cheeks with the whiny braise, but with a soft port on the outside. So we need something to counteract that to pop it off. And I chose fennel. Um, I actually really love a grilled and pickled mushroom for this dish, but I, when I was writing it, I felt like I'd given you too many mushrooms uh, dishes, and if there's someone out there that doesn't like mushrooms. So I came up with this idea, because most stores, including the Safeway where I shop, has fennel. Uh, I'm gonna save these for Friday night, because these beautiful prawns, you can chop them up and treat them like parsley and throw them in uh, herb salads, but I'm gonna pick some of these and have them garnish the dish. I'm also going to use them to whack my kid. <laughs> Am I getting them? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Lindsay, I actually had a hard time finding fennel as well. It was sold out. And it didn't have the fronds on it Ready? either. Um, yeah, maybe you got to go... 
Maybe you gotta go to the, the Safeway in Milwaukee where nobody wants any fennel. Uh, that's true. What could you substitute if you really can't find any fennel? Um, we could do carrots, onions, celery, like I said. Um, celery and red onion would be good. Yeah. Uh, Oh my gosh, Freddie, we really need you to be, behave yourself, okay? So, so I put in this pet, pot here all of the ingredients for pickling the fennel. The vinegar, I use the cat's vinegar from uh, Real Good Foods, uh, or you can just use any nice white wine, champagne vinegar. You can use a sherry vinegar if you want. Um, I got a little bit of water, I've got honey instead of sugar, I've got salt, I've got garlic powder. I'm gonna throw a couple of tablespoons of Dijon. Nothing makes me feel like I'm cooking French food like Dijon mustard. Pardon me, do you have any great to find? Nice job. And then I'm going to, to core and slice the fennel. I've cut the fronds off. You've got, this is a bowl, this grows underground. It's super aromatic. It's anise is the flavor of fennel. So there's the core right here. So I'm gonna cut it in quarters and take this core out. And some pickles, like we did those pickled onions, folks, and what we did is we heated the liquid up and we poured it over the onions. That's because an onion's gonna cook a lot faster. When you're making a pickle like this, you want it to have a nice crunch texture. But if I just poured this liquid over the fennel, it won't um, soften it enough. So what I'm gonna do is bring it up to a boil with the liquid. And that's just because fennel's a little bit tougher and it takes a little bit more to cook. And I think some nice meaty pieces like this will sit well on top of the beef cheek and give you really something to dig into. Whereas if I shaved it too fine, it would kind of fall apart and be soggy. Also, since we're gonna have this sit in our refrigerator for uh, essentially two days, Can you push your stool over to the sink and get yourself some water? There's a cup in the sink for you. Here, taste it. No, don't feed him that. <laughs> That's rude. What? Freddy just... So these are browning up real nice. They're kind of contracting. I got my fennel going in this pot. You could throw some herb in here too if you want. So maybe you have a little extra time around because uh, the recipe calls for five sprigs and you have all the extra like I do. So you want to tie the flavor together and it's in the top of the dish it's in that fennel that's the pickle and you're building kind of layers and then there's the time that's in the braise and the mind kind of puts two and two together and makes you say hey this is meant to be together maybe you want to throw a bay leaf in there as well you know throw a little bit more flavor cooking is fluid you know when i was sitting down and cooking this recipe thinking of it My mind wasn't at that spot, my quarantine brain. So I've got all of my ingredients in here. I'm just gonna turn this up on high. When it comes to a boil, I'm gonna give it a nice stir. Look at this wonderful brown action on these beef cheeks. So happy right here, okay? What are you getting into, Freddie? What are you getting into? Okay. And high heat's your friend on this. Uh, oh, everybody's got a drink. <laughs> Mom. No, don't scream.
I can't get that open. Hey, this is not supposed to be the record if the fire alarm doesn't go off, right? Yeah. So this fennel is great. I, I, I think that even like, if you are a fan of mushrooms, doing this fennel recipe and then um, you could throw some mushrooms in there. You could even do this if you don't have mushroom around. Saute some mushrooms and then throw them in there. Um, some mushrooms would also do really well in that risotto that we're gonna make. Like I said, obviously I've got mushrooms on the brain. We're having some for dinner with that pork later over the rice. But when you're doing a recipe like this, the end result is amazing, but it's really about, it's a labor of love. It's kind of, you know, we're all stuck inside. We've got time, right? Hopefully, you, you're gonna go outside. Do not, do not go in that pond. That pond is made so off limits. And the, and the goldfish. Okay, we're just going on the deck. So enjoy the process, you know, take your time. Have fun finding the beef cheeks. Have fun finding the high quality stuff. Have Are fun you done? Finding the fennel. Yeah. Right. People want a shirt with Freddie on it. We got to get a picture over to. Yeah, there's a couple people that said that they were capable and willing to make one. Yep. Everyone's loving the smoke alarm. Do you guys like when I go up close over the food like that? Does that make it more fun? Do you like that? Do you like it when? <laughs> Do you like it when I get close to the food? Do you like food? it when she gets close to the food? Can you smell it? Can you smell it through the phone? The lighting is hard in here. I don't want to move it. Yeah, they say, yeah, just like that. Oh, Jordan made a Chef Freddy logo. Okay, so we really do need to make a shirt with his picture on it. Have her posted on my uh, thing so we can do it. Hey! Yeah! Yeah! All right, that's too loud. I don't like that loudness. Thank you. People say I'm doing a good job filming. You're so good. Okay. Yeah, I just hate when the... I don't want the camera to make people frustrated. So this is coming up to a little bit of a simmer here. We're just going to let it come up just a little bit more. <laughs> Do we have a cooking with the Rutgers catchphrase, Gabe? Um... Well, Freddie's catchphrase is get out of my damn kitchen. Oh, that's good. Yeah? Pickly? Yeah, it's tart, but like it's got, it's actually complex with the, we used the Jacobson salt, blackberry honey, and then the Dijon mustard. <coughs> Can you guys hear how much she loves it? So, oh my God. it came up to a simmer. I'm gonna turn that off and just let it come, kind of come down to room temperature, and then I'll put it in my refrigerator. And then when it comes time to serve it, I want to bring it to room temperature. <laughs> so it said a good catchphrase is, no, we don't rub the knife on our face. <laughs> I think that um, soup du jour is soup. Oh, yeah, you have to have pants on to cook. That's definitely another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I've got this pan. You see what's... See those stuff right here? Since Han is so good at these close-ups, that is called fond. We want that. But before we get into that, we've got a little bit of the oil left. We don't want too much cooking oil um, because that makes our sauce oily. Because this is the we're building not only beautiful braised beef, but we're building the foundation of an amazing sauce. Oh yeah, he tried some. It's really good. I did. I'm just gonna give this just a touch more. Here. This. We did it. My heat is turned down now a little bit. 
If you don't set off your fire alarm at home, you're doing it wrong, okay? <laughs> we don't rub the knife on our face. It's so true. I think also one thing I've said is don't pee in the kitchen. Yeah. Don't pee in the kitchen, yeah. Don't pee in the kitchen. Peed outside. Well, we're, hey, progress, right? Not, progress, <laughs> not perfection. Yeah, he tried to pee in my plants today. So I'm going to just put a couple of these sticks. Hey, you guys. Come on, come on, back, back, back. We're doing something here. There's too much noise. Freddie, don't. You hear mom? Hey, hey, Freddie. That's too loud. Let's go turn back on the rest of it. Can you hear her? We need help. We need parenting help. We don't know. Third child, we still haven't figured out their three, the threes. A couple of black pepper. I put the thyme. A couple of black peppercorns. And this process. You can follow this process with chicken and using white wine. You can make pork this way. It's, it's all about the technique, guys. And once you have the technique done, you can play with the ingredients. Pork with like uh, smoky paprika, onions, and sherry would be wonderful. Um, I'm s sweating down a little bit here. Okay. I'm literally making a cup for you. Hey, hey, I'm fucking over here. Can you guys be quiet? And now I'm going to add this tomato paste, two tablespoons. You guys, what are you doing with that? That's amazing. The tomato paste has gone in, the vegetables are jumping out. I'm going to kind of just let the, the tomato paste toss with the vegetables. I'm not... Stop. Hey, no, 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 we're about to have dinner. Stop. Don't eat that banana. Don't get into any more food. Uh, the vegetables have not cooked Don't down too much, but they just picked up some of the fawn here. Guys. Hey, what's going on? Bye. They've just picked up some of the fawn here. The, the tomato paste will actually kind of caramelize on this in this pan. So this looks pretty good. Ready to get out of the garbage, man? Yeah, Mora, you should send us some. She said child size straight jackets work great. We need some of those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a splash of the wine. And I'm going to do what's called deglazing. No. No, you don't need nothing, man. You had your opportunity. Freddy, stop. He's okay, hitting. so now you can see the tomato paste, the wine is kind of thickened up. I'm going to take it off the heat. No, without attitude. No, the pan got put on lower heat. Now I'm going to put... Jump that right over. <laughs> Somebody says they deglaze their insides nightly. nightly. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take this spatula. See all this good flavor happening right here? Scraping all the goods up. So what I end up with, there's not a lot of good stuff left in that pan. Cause I put it in here. 
So this is looking good. I've got all of my ingredients in there. Now I just need the rest of the wine. And remember, beef cheek bourguignon, bourguignon, burgundy wine. My veal stock. See that, how it's gelatinous? That's from good, solid bones that have a lot of marrow and gelatin in them. You want that. That's what's gonna give a nice viscous sauce. Oh, uh, the spatula was in a swag bag. Um, it's got cupcakes on it. I think they make ones with lots of different designs. It was designed the best time to get spatulas is to go by Neil Patrick Harris and David Burka. The best <laughs> hey, this is an insider tip, okay? The best way to buy spatulas is you go to like a Sur La Table or a Williams of Sonoma and you go right after a holiday. So go right after Christmas. Santa Claus spatulas are they cook really good year round, but they're really <laughs> cheap on December twenty sixth. Same with like Easter, yeah. um, you know. Today's Earth Day, happy Earth Day. Yes. I, I believe it's Earth Day. And uh you know, your Earth Day spatulas are going to be really cheap tomorrow. Um, so the last little secret ingredient that you would never see in a beef bourguignon recipe, and a Frenchman would kill me, is just a touch of balsamic vinegar. Ooh. It provides a sweet acidity. It really brings the tomato paste, the wine, and the veal stock together. And it's that little thing that you don't even know it's there. By the time we go through all the process of cooking it down so that we eat it, you're not going to say, oh, the balsamic vinegar is wonderful, but it's it's like this how we put a squeeze of lemon on things just to really elevate it. The balsamic vinegar elevates the flavors in this dish, okay. and it's just two tablespoons are gonna go. And then if it needs it when we're uh, on the next phase of this recipe on Friday when we're making the sauce and making sure it's delicious, I might add another splash. Um, you know what elevates my happiness is when um, all the cabinets are closed nice and evenly. And the ones behind you, too. Oh, I didn't know what those ones. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm just saying. Makes me happy. All right. So we've got our fennel. We're just going to pop that in the fridge when it comes to room temperature. Make sure that you let it cool down to room temperature all the way before you put a lid on it, or else it'll steam and it'll continue cooking. We've got our beef cheeks. We're gonna cover them. I like to cover them with parchment and foil so that all of that moisture and the liquid stays in there. If you don't have parchment, just foil will work fine. So Gabe, what should we make next Wednesday for your birthday? Cheeseburgers. Yeah, that sounds good. We should make burgers. Okay. That's what I always want. Home burgers. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I guess we've sure. already done burgers, huh? Let's make fried chicken sandwiches. Okay. We can fry in the Dutch oven there. All right, all right. I thought you're the one that had the plans for my birthday, so I don't want to come up to you. Know. I'm oh. getting you Subway sandwiches for your birthday. Oh, okay, great. For lunch. Just a real, real clean look at wrapping that up, you know. One more time. You want it to be... Okay. Airtight. Fairly good, though. So once this is all done, can you freeze it? Like, can you freeze, after we're cooked and everything, can you freeze the beef cheek bourguignon for later? Yeah. 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 Uh, I would, I'll talk, let's talk about freezing on Friday. Okay. We'll ask that question again on Friday and I'll go, go deeper into it when it makes more sense to talk about it, okay? All right. That was so, Lindsay. So I'm going to just keep this right here since it's 6.30. I'm going to have my oven at about 200 to 10. And uh, I'm going to wait until right before I go to bed to put them in the oven. And then I'm going to check them when I wake up. And if you don't wake up at 6, I would say from anywhere, you know, you go to bed, say, like a normal person at 10, 30, or 11, check them at like 8, 9 in the morning. If you, put a, if you made this in a Dutch oven, could you just put the lid on it? Or do you want to yeah, use you the could, foil? Yes. Yeah, you can put the lid on it. 
for sure. Okay. And then uh, I will do my best, folks, to uh, when I wake up tomorrow morning to put on my. Uh, I'll even write a little note on the oven, like we do at work, and I'll, I'll make a little video on my story of me checking and showing you what the doneness looks like, so you have a good idea of what they look like when they're done. Okay, but. Uh, very unlikely you're going to overcook them, but in the morning when you check them, if there's resistance, you want it to be that kind of meat that when you, you don't need a knife for it, that it falls apart when you just a fork. All right. Great. Thanks. We look forward to seeing you on Friday when we're having cheesy risotto with beef cheeks and pickled fennel. Thanks so much, guys.